Uh, I'm gonna run out the door after I'm done with this to catch a plane. So uh, if you have questions, write down my Twitter handle. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> real landing talk, yeah. <laughs> so so we work with. Uh, actually, I'm gonna skip this part. This is this is actually a presentation I'm gonna give at uh, Apache Con next month. So. Um, this is all about how we integrated uh, Kafka with MQTT to fill in some holes with scaling MQTT. So basically, well, why do we use MQTT in the first place? It's a pub sub protocol. It works well for uh, our purposes. Um, it's also lightweight. It's easy to parse. And I'm not sure what's going on here. <laughs> and requires a very, very little resources on the client side. It's got very simple clients. Um, that's great for us. It's also reliable, secure. Uh, especially with the username and password and tunneling over TLS, it's great. Um, so we had some goals with a particular client. We needed to connect millions of subscribers, uh, publishers, um, and publishing thousands of messages per second. And the other key thing is it was a single subscriber, and that's that's where MQTT kind of falls apart a little bit. It's hard to have a huge amount of messages all being funneled down into one person subscribe to all of them. Uh, so we're also in Amazon, and we need to scale horizontally. That's the other problem. If, if we we're only on a single node, I don't think we would be having this issue with QTT. But since we're um, scaling horizontally, so we had, say, 5, 10, 20 servers, all accepting all the publishes, and all, pub uh, all pushing those subscriptions down to the same client, we run, we're running into hotspots, uh, where one, one node in the Amazon cluster was receiving most of the traffic. So some of the ways we were dealing with that was using DNS load balancing, uh, where you give a DNS record, you give it all the IP addresses for the host name, and just kind of cycle through them. It's not a great way to load balance, so we also had HA proxy. Um, and also for load balancing, if you're familiar with Cassandra, I don't have time to explain it, but it's, it's got a really good uh, scaling char characteristics. It's linear, linearly scaling. And I'm not finished with these slides. <laughs> um, I mentioned earlier about uh, hotspots. So when, um, when all the messages come in from all two million publishers, um, sometimes you'll run into a situation, it's called hotspot, where one server is taking the brunt of the load. All the traffic is moving through one server. You're trying to avoid that. This is kind of a cloud scenario. So Kafka is, was developed by LinkedIn. It's as a distributed log aggregation framework. It's really just PubSub. However, the, di the key difference between MQTT and Kafka is, well, uh, Kafka clients are very heavy. Um, they move the complexity to the client. So MQT MQTT has complex brokers. It's very easy to implement a client. Uh, Kafka is the other way around. The broker does almost nothing, and the clients are smart. And interestingly, that makes it very easy to scale Kafka. Um, it scales linearly. You can, well, near linearly. You can scale it just about as far as you want to. Um, uh, I guess you can research this later. I don't think I have time to discuss, but it depend only, well, yeah. Um, the, other, uh, the other cool thing about it is the sharded clients. Since it has a smart client, um, they use that same c concept that Cassandra has, uh, the consistent hash ring to spread out the load. And so um, you can have one subscriber, well, one topic space you're subscribed on, that there's actually like 20, 40, whatever subscribers that are splitting the load for that equally, which is a pretty cool concept. So what we did, uh, I'm sorry I don't have any pictures. I'm going to add those in later. Um, so we used, uh, we used this. So when the messages come in, each broker then uh, receives the published message, and then it publishes to uh, Kafka, and then Kafka deals with uh, distributing it among its uh, subscriber, subscriber group. Um, and so the, the nice thing about that is we were able to scale um, MQTT for uh, the Firehost subscriber uh, as far as we wanted 
we had up to going to 2 million clients and 65,000 messages per second. And also, there, our servers weren't overheating. They weren't, uh, there were no hot spots. And we could keep on scaling as much as we needed to. So it's a very nice situation to be in. Um, there's some problems with Kafka, aside from heavy, um, heavy clients. It's not really appropriate for Internet of Things applications. However, um, it scales well, and that's why we're using it. Uh, things I'm not happy with, aside from that, is uh, security and configuration. They don't even address security and configuration. It's kind of a pain because it goes through Zookeeper. Um, so I don't actually have time for questions. Well, maybe one question. But aside from that, um, I am in the process of writing a book about uh, it's being released by uh, A Press. So that's coming out in June. Uh, Kafka does guarantee ordering, so it didn't really have to think about it. Once it comes in, just publish it to Kafka. Right. Uh, actually, MQTT doesn't actually guarantee the ordering, um, so that we didn't consider that an issue. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think the typical message was about 250k, right? Is that right, Chris? Yeah, and then uh, 25k, and then what? Um, sorry, what was the question? No, we had millions of publishers all publishing, uh, maybe like once a second or whatever. Yeah, so total throughput. Yeah, the other key is there was um, a couple messages here and there that were like. 2.5 megs, which kind of throws their garbage collector for loops. Yeah, so. uh, uh, one more question. What was that? Um, <laughs> so how did I simulate 2 million publishers? Right. Uh, we, since we're already in Amazon, we actually just spun up other Amazon instances and just use those for publishers so for load tests. Um, for real-world scenarios, there's lots of devices out there, <laughs> but it's kind of hard to spin those up. Um, with that, I'm going to have.